Okay, today is December 22nd, uh, 2020. Uh, we're, the main overall topic is cognitive evolution from a Piagetian perspective. And today we're going to talk about a book, The, Struct uh, the Structure of Scientific Revolutions by Thomas Kuhn. I came across this book, I probably first heard about it uh, because Piaget uh, refers to it briefly in his uh, book Structuralism, which is essentially the basis for this next stage that I was talking about, either the structure stage or metasystem stage. Uh, I vary on the title uh, or for the label for the stage. Uh, Thomas Kuhn distinguished normal science from revolutionary science. And for his examples of revolutionary science include the Copernican Re Revolution, in which we uh, change from a point of view that, an Earth centric point of view, that the Sun revolved around the Earth, uh, to a heliocentric uh, point of view, which is that the Earth uh, goes around the Sun. Um, and then, of course, another one is the, the revolution from Newtonian mechanics to relativistic mechanics. What Piaget said is normal science uh, involves a community of scientists who share a paradigm, and paradigm is a very broad term, it includes theories, methods, uh, metaf metaphysics, uh, a whole bunch of things on different levels and um, so normally what um, what happens in normal science is that there is this paradigm and the scientists essentially solve puzzles or does something analogous to puzzle solving uh, within that paradigm when scientific revolutions involve a change from one paradigm to another. Uh, and essentially it becomes, in a sense, a popularity contest. The two paradigms uh, may both exist at the same time for a while, but in general, uh, and if there's going to be a successful revolution, the new one will win out over the old one, and the adherence of the old one will cease to be, eventually cease to be uh, considered scientists if they, uh, you know, maintain their hold on the old paradigm. Uh, one other aspect is that this community held paradigm idea uh, is, doesn't go back to the beginning of time. Earlier on, uh, Kuhn says there's a sort of a pre-paradigm period where individuals might have had paradigms, but basically each person that was involved in science was starting from scratch. So there wasn't a paradigm, so you wouldn't talk about revolutions uh, maybe uh, during those times. But uh, once there was a paradigm, when paradigm started to happen, um, uh, then you could distinguish between normal science and revolutionary science. Now one of the interesting things was uh, that that view of science, it's not really at odds at, but was seen at, uh, as if it were odds with what we call the hypothetical uh, deductive method. Uh, con conventional science views itself as progressing basically using the hypothetical uh, theoretical deductive method and one of the uh, champions of that point of view was named as Karl Popper so he was um, felt like he had to challenge uh, Thomas Kuhn's uh, view of science that was set forth in the structure of scientific revolutions and I guess they went back and forth a little and Karl Popper essentially invited or challenged uh, Thomas Kuhn to a debate. Uh, there's a whole book, uh, which I don't have the title to right now, but I, I own a copy of it, in which both Kuhn and Popper uh, prepare articles 
and uh, you know state their positions. What I think is very interesting about that particular debate is Karl Popper, in my mind anyway, is like in a very advanced formal operations guy, and Kuhn is maybe not so advanced within his stage, but he's in the higher stage, the structure or meta system stage. And so it's interesting to see the clash between these two proponents, and I think it's illustrative of the distinction between the stages. Karl Popper uh, essentially believes in a single truth and that uh, when you debate uh, you can decide whether things fit with that truth or not. Kuhn on the other hand, being at the structure stage, will see that there are that it's possible to have equally valid but distinct views of reality and therefore an argument that sounds uh, solid in what he would say was well, in one paradigm uh, might not hold up in another paradigm and another argument that would hold up in the second paradigm might not hold up in the first and therefore he didn't hold the same uh, sense that debates were worthwhile. It just, uh, I think he thought that people would just talk across each other if they were from different paradigms rather than sort of getting to the truth. And I would say that Thomas Kuhn's view was the more advanced, more enlightened view. Um, and another aspect of Kuhn, when, when he started looking at what, well, I mean, of Karl Popper, Karl Popper, when he looked at Kuhn's uh, view of normal science, uh, Popper said, oh yes, I think there is such a thing as normal science, but I think it's bad science. And I thought that was a very interesting thing because nor most science is normal science and Karl Popper is saying that most of the science, uh, I don't want to put words in his mouth, it's almost like most science is, um, is sort of bad science or inferior science, which is not, you know, uh, Kuhn was not making value judgments as to what was good and bad, he was trying to just describe things. And I sort of felt like um, that was a typical uh, uh, tactic and formal operations uh, way of dealing things when your theory or your viewpoint, your formal operations viewpoint fails. Uh, there's a tendency to blame reality rather than look at the inadequacies of your systems. So I think from the standpoint of seeing uh, a documented case of a conflict between, uh, let's say, the structure stage and the formal operation stage, this, Tom, this Thomas Kuhn versus Karl Popper uh, interaction uh, is maybe typical. Well, I don't know if it's typical, but it certainly shows the difference be differences between those two stages. So I think that's enough for now. Thank you. Bye.